Welcome to the TempraCode online video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover the basics of configuring and starting a logger with TempraCode for Windows. My name is Luca Bartlett and I'm the Research and Development Engineer at TempraCode International Limited. Okay, so here I am in Windows and I'm going to open TempraCode for Windows. Now, I've already connected up my USB reader and I have a logger within the reader. We can see the reader is on COM10, and I'm just going to go ahead and query the logger. Now, there's two ways to do that. I can do query logger, or I can push the spacebar as outlined here. I'm just going to go ahead and push the spacebar. This query gives us an overview of the logger, and we can see the logger serial number, the logger type, the current temperature, the logger status. Now, this is quite important. It in this case it's showing that the logger is ready and it hasn't been started yet but this could say it's logging because this is a scientific logger we can only do temperature logging it also gives us an overview of our parameters now here we've got the total samples that this logger has made in its lifetime and the total uses we also see the logger version the sensor and the memory so this might not be the correct parameters for your current test so let's go and change the parameters there's two ways to change the logger parameters one is to go up to program parameters or alternatively you could just click on this button so here we are at the parameter screen um, user data allows you to specify some of your own user data so I'm going to say here well, I don't want this to be called test shipment. I will call this um, uh, video demo setup. There we go. Just changing the text so you can see some changes. Again, scientific only, so temperature is the only thing we can record. Some of our loggers allow for humidity and these will allow you to measure humidity or temperature and humidity as well as temperature so our upper limit is currently set to 32 degrees I don't want this at 32 so I'm just going to make it 26 um, lower limit is minus 5 I'm going to make this minus 10 for the purposes of this test now I can also use these up and down buttons to change the temperature here we have the humidity again this is disabled now, start on date. Start on date is a really useful feature because it allows us to start a logger at a set time. Your computer time will be used to calculate the required start delay. Now, the reason why this feature is great is because it allows you to start multiple loggers at the same time. This means that you could validate your shipment if you have multiple loggers because if you start all your loggers at the same time you're guaranteeing that they will start within a few seconds of each other so this could be a useful ship shipping option for you but in my case now I don't really want to use it so I'll disable it your sample period is the duration between the temperature samples sort of common sense now the logger in this particular case the logger is limited to a uh, multiple of two seconds so we can go from two seconds onwards as long as it's divisible by two seconds so in my case I will set it to 10 seconds start delay is another interesting feature for instance I could set this to one hour and I could start the logger now and I could let it condition with my product at let's say minus five degrees for about an hour I could then pull it out and package it with my product and it would have already preconditioned to the correct temperature of my product this means that we wouldn't see any big jumps in temperature when we started so this is a very useful feature now I'm going to set it again 10 seconds I just want it quite low for the time being. Loop overwrite will basically loop over the memory once the logger is filled up and continue logging. Now you can see here when the memory will become full 
and you can also see that this changes as I change the sample period. In this case, it will expire in 3 days, 18 hours, and 18 minutes. So that's when we would start rewriting samples. In this case, I don't need to use that, so I'm going to leave it unchecked. The Start With button and Stop With button allow the user to start and stop the logger by using the button that's inbuilt on the logger. If these options are unchecked, the only way to start and stop the logger are with these two buttons in software. You will always be able to start and stop the logger in software. Allow markers allows us to place points of interest when the logger is logging. So how this works is, let's say I've got the logger being preconditioned with some product and the start delay has expired so the logger starts logging. About half an hour later I pull the logger out, I hold down the button for two seconds to place a marker and then I package it into the final shipping box with my product. The marker will appear as a flag in the data which will allow us to clearly see when we repackage the product. So it allows us to place a point of interest in time. So this is a very useful feature. Start with switcher and stop with switcher aren't really used on the scientific range of data loggers. Now the safe range feature will allow the logger to check the current sample temperature va values with the current limits. So it can instantly tell you if the limits have been exceeded without you having to read it through software. The limit delay option allows you to delay a s the alarm by a few samples. So for instance if we set it to 3, the alarm will not trigger until 3 samples have been read that are above or below our limits. In this case I want it to 0, as in I want instant alarming. We can also save these parameters to defaults. So if I just save to defaults, now the next time I want to do something I can for instance change this and I can just load from defaults and it'll load straight back to 10 seconds. Defaults are also able to be configured from the options menu. This will be covered in another video where we go into more detail. Now you can also protect the logger by placing an 8 digit password. This is just 8 numerical digits. The password of 0 indicates no password. So any other combination of 1 to 8 digits in any way you want will password protect the logger. Because the password is not shown, you will have to retype the identical password below. TemperCode will be unavailable to assist you if you lose your password, but you will be able to read your logger's data. In this case, I don't want a password. So I'm just going to push apply and it will apply these parameters to the logger. I can now push OK and we're done. It's just going to save the logger. OK, so here we go. It's got all our parameters that we've program programmed in and the logger is now ready to be started. Like I said, the user you could let the user start the logger with the button or alternatively you can start it from software. In this case I'm going to start it from software just to show you how it's done. So let's click start. We get this pop-up box which you can hide in the future and we'll start the temperature logger. And there we go. The temperature logger is now started. Because the start delay was set to 10 seconds we're going to wait for 10 seconds before we query the logger. But essentially, the logger is now counting down from 10 seconds down to zero. When it reaches zero, it will take its first sample. And then, every 10 seconds afterwards, it will take another sample. So, it's been about 10 seconds now, so let's put the sp push the spacebar. And here we go. We can see that the logger is now logging and we can see that we already have three samples in the logger. So 30 seconds have gone past after the start delay. And there we go. You have just started your logger. Please refer to the next video in the series to learn about how to stop and read the data from the logger. Thank you for watching. If you need any more help, please contact us.